Hello and welcome back to Design Thinking course. Uh, I've already debriefed you about four stages of design thinking. Empathize, analyze, solve and test. So these are stages that I sort of thought of when we were designing this course for the first time, I don't know, maybe a few years ago. One thought kept com coming back to me saying, will this stand the test of time? Will these four stages, does it make any sense? Has anybody done work like this before? So I wasn't quite sure. So I have this passion for travel. I always go around places uh, where I've not been before, like many other people who love traveling. So I planned a trip to one of India's ancient caves. Right now, we are actually standing in one of the Buddhist caves, which is close to 2,200 years old. Very, very old. Much older than any of us, obviously. Okay. So, I wonder what connection these caves, these set of caves have with design thinking. We'll find out. We are right now in Bhaja Caves. This is about 60 or 70 kilometers from Pune, India. And uh, these are the set of 2,200 year old caves, about 20 odd caves, mainly for prayer, meditation, and uh, served as living quarters here for the monks. All you see around me are caves, which were used for living. And uh, they would come back and pray. Uh, monks used to live here, sort of like a monastery. Um, so I was intrigued when I said, okay, I need to be finding out more about these caves. And I found out that uh, people had devoted a lot of time into praying Buddha, so Lord Buddha. So I got curious and I said, can I find out what is it that he was doing? So it is one of my preparatory, um, you know, for preparation for travel. So I normally do that and I said, let me find out, go online and I found out. Then I came to this point where I saw the main teachings of Lord Buddha when he attained his enlightenment after 49 days of meditation. He went to his first set of students uh, in Sarnath, which is close to the heart of India. And there he gave his discourse, first ever discourse to five of his students. So his five students listened to him in rapt attention to what Lord Buddha had to say after his enlightenment. Those were four noble truths. So I'm going to be telling you what those noble truths are and then I'll let you guess what we're going to talk about next. After that, I'll let you do the connection. The first noble truth as specified by Lord Buddha was Dukkha or suffering. So there is suffering in the world. Acknowledge that there is suffering in the world. Now, it may seem like a depressing place to start, but Lord Buddha cited that suffering could be because of death, birth, aging, diseases, and your attach attachment to material possessions, of your not meeting your desires, of losing somebody that you like, these could be your reason for suffering. Now, he wasn't hinting on you giving up all of this and being a recluse in the world. He was merely suggesting you to be aware that suffering is part and parcel and it's two sides of the same coin. Happiness on one side and suffering on the other. So, they are one and the same, you are looking at the same thing. So, that was his first noble truth, Dukkha. The second noble truth that Lord Buddha talked about was Samudaya or finding out the root cause. How, what is the root cause of suffering? The waterfalls that you saw, saw just now came from a source on the top. So what is the root cause, the source of your suffering? You can meditate about it, you can talk to experts, you can talk to your community, your family support and get the root cause of what is it that you are going through. What is the root cause of your particular suffering? This was his second noble truth, Samudaya. The third truth is that of Nirodha or cessation. Put an end to the suffering. 
This was Lord Buddha's third truth. This is, uh, once you find out the root cause of what your suffering is, now it is up to you to figure out how is it that you want to end the suffering. How do we mitigate it? How do we reduce it? Can you meditate on it? Can you ask your friends, your community, your support community, your family? What is that it that you can do? This was Lord Buddha's third teaching, Nirodha. Now I want you to give, I, I will show you a cool thing in this. this. These caves are 2200 years old at least as I've already mentioned. Now we probably have heard of this instrument or some of you even play this instrument called tabla. I'd like you to look at what a tabla looks like 2200 years ago. And here it is, if I can get you to point, there is a lady playing the tabla. This is one of the drums and the second drum is over here, I guess. That's the second drum. So she is playing the tabla. This is one of the earliest evidences found of the tabla. And what you also see is Lord Indra riding on his Airavat or white elephant. This is the elephant that he rides all across the heavens. He is the lord of the heavens, lord of the weather. And that's what he does. And on my right, you can see the sun god, Surya, on his chariot with the four horses. And you can see part of the wheel. You can see the sun god, I guess, with his consorts riding across the heavens. This is amazing. For me, this is amazing. Both of these are sculpted so well and it has stood the test of time. The fourth noble truth is Marga or the path. You set yourself a path based on what you've done so far in the three noble truths. It is to mitigate the suffering, to put an end to the suffering. You set yourself on a course to end the suffering, to put an end. So that is Marga. The way you want to do it, the path forward which sets you to liberation or Nirvana. That in all were the four noble truths. To reiterate, it is the first one is Dukkha, acknowledgement of suffering. Samudaya, where you find the root cause of suffering. Third is Nirodha, put an end to the suffering. And fourth is Marga, set yourself a path to the end of suffering. Now, what has this got to do with design thinking? If you haven't figured it out, I will lay it out for you. So, what is the connection between design thinking and the four noble truths, truths of Buddha? It is basically that you have empathize where you put yourself into the shoes of your customer and know they are suffering. So what is it that they're going through? Really find out, go into the depths of experience, what they are experiencing to find out what they're going through. The second is analyze where you find the root cause of their suffering. Why is it that they're going through such an experience? Is it something that, uh, what is the root cause? Find out where is it that you can really help. Then comes solve, which is you put an end to their suffering by your offering your solutions, your, your creativity, your ideas come in and you solve what is it that their suffering is and how to end that. Finally is the testing piece where you set yourself a path saying, this is how I'm going to end their suffering. This is the path I'm going to embark myself. I go back to my customer and offer them whatever your solution is and to make sure that they, their suffering is ended, their problems are over, they are much happier than they were before. So these are the four stages and I found they were correlated. And I said, wow, this is amazing, this is great. We have 2200 year old evidence that somebody else had already come up with and this actually works. At the same time, I was a bit crestfallen. I thought I had come out with the, I was the first one to come out with these four stages. Unfortunately, I was 2,200 years old, or rather 2,200 years late. So, it's okay. So, as long as the method works and it's of use to somebody, it, it works. So, these are the four stages that you will be using as part of the design thinking course. Thank you.